Hey everyone who reads Marvel comic books, did you ever wonder how can we make Amazing Spider-Man worse? I get to answer that question for you today. Or, or even better, did you wonder what actually happened with Miss Marvel? Oh, I get to answer that question for you as well. And did you ever wonder if Kevin Feige has any direct influence as to what happens in the comic books? Today, we're going to talk about that as well. But today's episode is brought to you by This Hot Sauce Is. This Hot Sauce Is is the brand of hot sauce that I have created with my friends. We have one flavor out right now. It's a very mild hot sauce. It's a green hatch chili hot sauce that has been infused with a whiskey flavor. Very mild, no actual alcohol in the product. Now, I was told it'd be a lot more fun if I started reading the reviews for our hot sauce, such as from Andrew, great hot sauce, not very hot, but good flavor. Highly recommend. Over here, we've got from Randy McDougald. I purchased this sauce for a new experience and I got it. From Elijah, I have this hot sauce is very delicious. I'm very happy with this product and I enjoy mine with. The review site has cut it off. I don't know. But what I'm saying is we have five star reviews from a lot of people. Overall, we have a 4.5 on our review scale and we'd love to have you trying out our hot sauce. So make sure you click the link down below, join us and let me know what you think by leaving a review and I will read it. Logan, I'm assuming it's Logan the Wolverine, says amazing hot sauce. It tasted great and it went through the whole bottle in less than a week. I will definitely be getting more of dot, dot, dot. I should have opened up the behind the scenes reviews, but whatever. That's what I have. I hope you guys enjoy. Now let's talk about the Marvel thing. Okay, so what exactly is going on, Benny? Why are you making this video? And why is Marvel actually making a statement about it? That's right, Marvel spoke. Are we all in like amazement that they decided to do a press release about this comment made on a random podcast? Yes, we are. Why did they choose this to be when they finally talk about what's going on with the MCU and Marvel comics? I don't know but they did. So let me tell you what exactly happened and how we got to this point. All the way back in the Amazing Spider-Man issues 1 through 25, they built up an entire storyline involving a, a villain that no one really overall cared about with a storyline of what did Peter Parker do? We saw Peter Parker in a crater. It looked like a nuclear blast had gone off and it was just a question of what did Spider-Man do to cause this issue? The storyline then started to develop where we saw Mary Jane with an individual known as Paul. And the storyline developed over the course of 25 issues. In those issues, we had some brief cameos of a fan favorite character, Miss Marvel. Now, while this was going on, Miss Marvel had her television show. And in her television show, we discovered that Miss Marvel in the MCU will be a mutant to line up with the X Men run that is going to be coming out. Probably because the Inhumans tanked terribly on big screen or little screen. They were on the little screen with a show that no one really watched, but we all liked watching Black Bolt blow his own head open inside of the multiverse of madness. But anyway, that's not here nor there. 25 issues barely got to see Miss Marvel. At the end of the 25 issues, Marvel and Zeb Wells run, they were toting that what had happened is that Mary Jane had died. We even put it up on the channel because if Marvel's going to use that as clickbait, I sure as am going to as well. Anyway, couldn't say that sentence, had to do it four times. Dan gave you the best take. So what happened is we saw a scene in which the villain seemingly had killed Mary Jane. The storyline, I'm not going to go into it, basically involved Mary Jane was supposed to die to bring forth a prophecy. And Mary Jane had lived in a multiverse different dimension with this person named Paul, where she had had two kids that they found in the wilderness off on their own and decided that she was going to raise these kids with Paul. No, we're not here to argue about Paul. I can already see you writing it down in the comments. We all agree Paul is terrible and the kids don't matter. Mary Jane, what the hell are you doing? Just get back to Peter Parker. That, that is the general consensus as to what's going on. But I mean, I just, I, I want to see Peter get with Black Cat. What I don't want to see is Peter Parker not have a girlfriend. I, I, I just, I, there's so many options. Carly Cooper, Black Cat, we could go over there. But anyway, back to our topic, Amazing Spider-Man. The whole world, and I mean everyone, everyone in the entirety of the world, who cares about issues going on in foreign countries? Who cares about what's going on in the political spectrum? We all cared because Miss Marvel died and it was handled poorly. You see in issue 25, Mary Jane was shown to be dead. And what we discovered was that it was actually Miss Marvel shape-shifting into Mary Jane to look like she took the bullet. The internet was going crazy. There was a lot of problems with this. So first off, they decided to kill Miss Marvel on Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. They decided to kill Miss Marvel in a book that Miss Marvel did not primarily star in. 
And they decided to derail the conclusion to Zeb Wells' 25-issue run of What Did Peter Do? by moving it over to the death of Miss Marvel. All of this happening in line with the television show and the announcement that she was now showing up in the Marvel's movie coming out in a couple of months. The general consensus from comic book readers in most of the entirety of the world, because as I said, the entire world was tracking this. This was bigger than the moon landing. But anyway, the entire consensus was that they had killed her off so they can bring her back as a mutant in a few months. Conveniently, at the Hellfire Gala, they decided to bring back Miss Marvel as a mutant. It was because Cyclops had worked with her on the champion's team. He felt really bad about her death, decided to abuse the privileges of the X-Men with their resurrection protocols, bringing back Miss Marvel, and they discovered she had a hidden mutant gene. It was also then announced that the the actress who plays Miss Marvel will be helping headline Miss Marvel, putting her into more of the forefront in the Marvel comics by putting her in as a mutant. She got a brand new X-Men costume. She was heavily involved in the Fall of X, but not like directly in the Fall of X, but like if here's Fall of X, here's Miss Marvel. She's like over here, she's doing her own thing, but but you know, Fall of X is happening at the same time. But anyway, that that's it's over here. Again, Fall of X, Miss Marvel. But she was heavily involved in Fall of X if you talk to the X-Men people. And we all just, okay, that's that, right? We all got mad. We all got stupid. I made a video over here because the entire internet was blowing up. And they were all arguing about how could they do this? How could they kill Miss Marvel in this way? How could they already derail Spider-Man's storyline to do this with over here? Then there was also the argument of people not enjoying Zeb Wells' amazing Spider-Man run, which was only made worse because of the fact that the conclusion was to kill Miss Marvel. So instead of getting the conclusion he wanted to the run, we had to we used it as a way to kill Miss Marvel. And we all just assumed that was to line it up with the MCU. That was it, right? We all assumed it. Well, now we have confirmation, which is like insane. So what happened is Cody Ziegler, Ziegler or Ziegler, it's one of those. Anyway, Cody was on a podcast known as the Spider-Man podcast, which sounds cool. I should probably watch it or listen to it, or whatever it's on. But either way, uh, I didn't watch it, and I didn't listen to it. But he was on this, and he talked about what happened with Miss Marvel's death. Now, the weird part about this is, Cody is the writer for Miles. So I don't know why he was asked about this situation, but okay. So he came out and said that he was aware of what was going on, that Zeb Wells had spoken to him. Zeb Wells told me months before the plan, which was Feige called up Zeb Wells and said, hey, I don't do this very often, but can you please do this to make things in line with Marvel, assuming cinema, because we have some stuff we want to do with Kamala. So Wells was like, F, I'm the guy that drew the short straw and got stuck with it. Zeb Wells knew people were going to be very mad at him for killing off Miss Marvel, especially in May, especially during all of the promotion that she was getting. Now, this sounds like almost nothing. But the big problem here is that, and this is what people are taking away from it, this means that there is a direct link from the MCU, from Kevin Feige, to altering comic books, to make the comic books match up with the MCU. Now, we've all assumed that's what's going on. The lack of Fantastic Four during the period in which Marvel didn't own the Fantastic Four. The deprioritization of the X-Men during the period in which Marvel did not own the X-Men. The changes to some key characters and how it seems to line up with MCU-isms, such as like so many Spider-Verse stuff and things like that. I know Spider-Verse isn't MCU, but they're still trying to capitalize on it. There's like what was supposed to be a Spider-Verse one-off became a Spider-Verse two-off became a trilogy. And then they were like, well, let's do a fourth one. Who cares? Like, it just kept going. So we, we, we get it. We, we, we know that that happens, but there was no direct correlation to that. By Feige stating this, by, by Zeb Wells claiming this happened. Now, bear in mind, this is supposedly Kevin Feige called Zeb Wells, Zeb Wells told Cody, and then Cody told the podcast. So this is about as far away from the game of telephone as you're going to get. Like, this is three people away from Kevin Feige supposedly making this call. But to make it more interesting, so this could have just come out, it could have blown away, and we would have been like, okay, so you just confirmed that if the MCU does something, we can expect to see it in the comic books. We already kind of knew that was coming, but we now we know for certain that that actually does happen. Marvel came out and made a statement. Marvel said something. So Marvel came out and said, no, that is wrong. They flatly denied the rumor 
and added that Kamala Khan's death and resurrection as a mutant was explicitly an editorial decision, one planned long before Amazing Spider-Man number 26. Following Miss Marvel, the new mutant, Kamala will headline the upcoming X. Oh, that's from this article here. But they're saying that, you know, following that, she's now in the new mutant, and then she's going to go into the X-Men spinoff NYX. And then there was a separate statement from Marvel Studios that was like, no, 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 no. Feige never called anyone. Now, this is weird. One, Marvel never makes statements about what their writers state on a random podcast or what they say on Twitter. If you don't believe me, just look at the tirades some of the Marvel writers have done on Twitter. I have said on my podcast for years that somebody needs to police the Marvel writers on Twitter and on podcasts because they go off on these random tirades pissing off people and no one seems to care. And they just say things that they shouldn't be saying. And Marvel's never made a statement on that. There's literally like Twitter proof of like certain writers claiming that they want to injure people that are against them. There's Twitter proof of individuals who wrote previous runs going through and having heated debates with people stating things that they shouldn't be stating. Marvel's never made a statement on that at all. They've never, never come in and said anything. But you have a podcast statement, and all that was said was Kevin Feige called Zeb Wells and said, do this. Isn't that weird? Now, if I thought about this in advance, I'd have a tinfoil hat to grab and just kind of throw on my head. But one, I don't have tinfoil at the house. And two, I don't have the effort to put... Dan, can you just superimpose a tinfoil hat on my head at this point? It could look as, 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 co co as, as, as copy-paste as you want it to look. Cut out art. Just throw it on my head. Okay. Another statement was made by the MCU side of this argument. They said they prefer Marvel to not match up with the movies because they consider the Marvel comics to be working 10 years in advance from the MCU. That by doing this, they're giving the MCU new content to work with in 10 years. They will catch up and they will do what the comics are doing. But we have seen that not to be true. Slight changes to storylines or origins. Uh, another great example is Loki becoming a good guy. The comics matched up to Loki being a good guy. If you were unaware, Loki was not the jokester anti-hero that he is in the movies and he is in his show. And he was just a downright villain who once in a while showed that he had a heart. But as the movies came out and people liked Loki as he was, Marvel started releasing anti-hero Loki content. Star-Lord is another example. He's kind of like just, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, but everything works out for me, thanks to Chris Pratt. But in the comics, pre that, he was a very serious, like brooding hero. He did not make jokes. He did not link together the Guardians. He didn't want to be a part of it. He was just Star-Lord. So the comics have matched up to the movies quite a few times, and the movies have butchered storylines that are, that are very awesome in the comics, and then they put them into the movies, and it's like, why? Why did you do that? Case in point, Secret Wars as a TV show isn't even what the comic is about. They made their own shit up, and I still think it's stupid, and I don't know why you did it, and if you wanted to make your own spy thriller, at least do it good. But anyway, back to our topic on hand here, the Kamala Khan situation. Why was this such a hot-button topic? that Marvel and the cinema side had to come out and deny this. I think this is because right now they're in full swing of trying to correct things. Look, you can argue all you want about the agendas or whatever you want, and it's whatever. Some of them are valid, some of them are stupid, and half the time it's just people making up bullshit so they can grift you into clicking a video and then go sign up for their stupid Kickstarter. I, I know that. We know that for a fact. That half the time, I'm not saying all of them before you argue with me. And I'm not naming names, so you can't pinpoint me. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, <laughs> what I am stating is we're all aware that there has been an issue with the MCU in terms of quality, production, and some questionable script decisions. I think at this point, the MCU is just in full damage control mode. If you didn't watch the announcements from CinemaCon because you're a normal person and didn't even know CinemaCon existed, and the, never mind the fact they didn't really announce anything, there was one key announcement that happened in CinemaCon that I found it to be an interesting announcement. After everything that had happened with Jonathan Majors and everything that had happened with the Kang character and everything that had happened between Quantumania and the Marvels and all this other stuff, the one thing that Kevin Feige never did was comment on the X-Men or the Mutants. That was never stated. He never did that. We all knew that if he just came out and he didn't even have to name anything, just said our first X-Men movie is going to be coming out around this time. And here's who we're planning on making it around. We don't even have them cast. You know, the internet would have been like, 
MCU is amazing again. I can't wait to be a part of that. But he didn't. He didn't do that. CinemaCon, he did. CinemaCon, he announced the X-Men movie as a 2027 release, which means that I think whatever happened recently at Disney is actually going into effect where they're, I wouldn't say they're going against any of the things they were doing beforehand, because if that were the case, there's a few decisions that they just made literally last month that wouldn't have happened. What I do think is that they have realized they need the hype to come back up. They need to announce things like X-Men. They have to get us excited. And what that also means is that if there's anything that people are going to take in the wrong way, such as don't read Marvel comics because one, it'll spoil things in the MCU, or two, it will uh, they're, they're being affected by the movies and they're not as good, they're putting a kibosh on it. They're like, we're not doing that. Don't let that information get out. Now, did Kevin Feige actually call Zeb Wells and make that call? I don't know. I personally, I the way that this is going down, I think that somebody called Zeb Wells and it was assumed it was for the MCU. I do think maybe the editorial from Marvel called and they dropped a few names that maybe they shouldn't have. And they were like, hey, Kevin Feige would like to let you do this. And, th- and then through our game of proverbial telephone, it became, hey, we heard the MCU wants you to do this. And Zeb Wells then they're like, hey, Kevin Feige wants me to do this. And then it goes down to Cody and Cody's like, hey, Kevin Feige called Zeb Wells to do this. That's how a game of telephone works. So I'm pretty sure it's something closer to that than Kevin Feige directly calling the current amazing Spider-Man writer to shoehorn in the ending of his storyline to involve the death of another character. But anyway... Tinfoil hat off, because I totally think Dan clip arted in some t- some tinfoil hat stuff for me and didn't do anything crazy. Um, but yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think is going on. Overall, this this I don't even know what we're going to name this because it isn't really a problem with. It isn't really a theory. I guess it's kind of a theory. It's just me talking about what's been going on in the comic book world, which is crazy to think that we've even gotten to this point, that Marvel and, the, and Marvel Studios are making statements within two days of a podcast going live about a guy's state. It's just so weird, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to see me do more rambling and ranting, check out Benny Has a Problem. We got a lot of fun videos over there. Basically, anything that isn't comic book themed or manga themed, I make a video about and throw it over there instead. So it's crazy. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time right here at Comic Story.